the end of the lesson, you are expected to identify chi-square, follow the step-by-step -step process of calculating chi-square, and appreciate the use of chi-square in a decision tree algorithm. At this time, what we will have is the calculation of the chi-square. So in most cases, we may not be dealing with only two splits because we may be working with a data set that contains a lot of variables and with that, the three methods that we have already taken up may not be applicable and they are not really applicable. So with this case, we're going to find another way to determine which splits is the most effective and the most efficient to use in our data for a decision tree algorithm. And with that, chi-square is very important in this situation because it can work on two or more than two splits. And once again, guys, I have to remind you that this one also works for categorical target values. I believe at this point, you would want to ask me, how does chi-square work? Chi-square works on the statistical significance of differences between the parent node and the child node. So what does it mean? So for us to be able to understand this one properly, we're going to understand the value of chi-square. How do we calculate the value of chi-square? So this is just actually very simple. As you could see here, we have this formula to use for this calculation. So we have the square root of the actual value minus the expected value. And of course, we're going to square that. And we're going to divide this into or by the expected value. So as you could see here, we have the parent node and we have the child node. We also have to take note of the expected value and the actual value. So when we say the expected value, this is actually the expected value for a class in a certain child node. And this is based on the distribution of the classes in the parent node. So as we go along later on in our calculation, we may have a better understanding of this one. What about actual value? What is this all about? Just by the word itself, actual, which is the actual value for a class in a child node. Supposing we have already identified the chi-square value of all the child nodes, what we will do next is that we're going to sum these values with respect to a certain class. And so here we have to evaluate the outcome. And when we have a higher value, it means that our split is more homogeneous. So for better understanding, let's have this example. So once again, we have here two splits. We have a split on temperature and a split on humidity, but we're going to have them one by one. So don't be intimidated by these numbers because we're going to have them one by one. So if you could still remember, we have here two nodes for the split on temperature. We have the hot and the cold. And this one here is the actual value. And here is the not actual temperature of the hot and the cold and here is the expected temperature and here is the expected value of the not actual temperature and then here we have the division temperature and how do we get this division temperature so we simply deducted this one from this one so for nine or sorry so for seven we have 18 minus 11 and for the negative 7, we have 2 minus 9. Then for negative 4, we have 2 minus 6. And then for 4, we have 8 minus 4. And so after identifying these values, what we will do next is that we're going to get the chi-square value of each one. So on how to do that, we simply plug in the values in this formula. So the actual minus expected, then we square that, and then divided by the expected value. So we have 7, as you could see. We square that, then divided by 11, and then we get 2.11. And we do that for negative 7, which is 2.33. For the negative 4, we have 1.63. And then for 4, we have 2. Sorry, I forgot to put here. It must be squared. All right. 
So this one is not clear. Let's make this one clearer for you to see. Squared. This is squared, right? So negative 4 squared, that becomes 16 divided by 6. And we get the square root of that. Then we have 1.63. 4 times 4, that is 16 divided by 4. 4 square root of 4 is 2. And then after that, what we do here is we get the sum total of all of these values for the split and temperature and we get 8.07 which means to say the chi-square of the split is 8.07 and also we do the same process for the split on humidity and this one here in this column we could see the values of the actual humidity for high and the low humidity and here is not the actual humidity and we could see here is the expected humidity for the actual humidity and we have the expected values for the not actual humidity and the same process we do the differences of the actual value minus the expected value and so we get 2 here because 12 minus 10 is 2 then we have 4 minus 6 that's negative 2 then 4 minus 7 that becomes negative 3 10 minus 7 we have 3 and so we have here the values of the chi-square and how we do that the same process we plug in the values in our formula and so this one we have 2 squared divided by 10 and we get the square root then we have 0.63 and for the negative 2 we have 0.82 for the negative 3 we have 1.13 for the positive 3, we have 1.13. On the same process here, we get the sum total of all of these values, and then we have 3.721. So after finding 3.721 and 8.7, what we do here now is that we're going to make comparison. As what we have discussed, the higher the value of the chi-square means the more homogeneous the split is. So let's find here the comparison. So the temperature has a value of 8.07 and the humidity is 3.37. So 8.07 is higher than 3.37, which means to say that the split on temperature is more homogeneous than the split, which means to say that we're going to use the split on temperature as our first split for our decision tree. What is this for? Why do we have to study this? Sometimes we are faced with non-binary options or splits and the other three methods are not applicable. So in this case, the use of a chi-square is very important to do this. This is also used in feature selection. This tells us which features are better in connection to the outcome variable. After all being said and done, let's try this. What is chi-square? How do we calculate chi-square? Why do we have to understand chi-square? Please write your answers in a comment down below so that we would be able to have a very rich interaction of ideas and we can learn from each other. Do you want to know more about this channel? Just click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.